Welcome to another episode of the Daddy Dialogues podcast. I am Daddy Fields here. I'm Daddy Ethan, Dr. Ethan Himovich. Welcome and bienvenue. Welcome. Bravo, bravo. Ashante, stranger. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just got out of karaoke. That's why I'm singing. And oh. uh, mm-hmm. you saw I, I posted to Facebook. Yeah, I'll check it out. I did mm-hmm. Four non blondes. What's up? Did you get a standing ovation? <laughs> this audience was so lukewarm. Really? <laughs> I have no idea why. <laughs> So, um, what have you been up to, dude? You were at the Raleigh Pride event. I, do, I was. It was ruthlessly hot outside, so we only stayed for about an hour. Oh. But mm-hmm. it was nice. We walked around. Um, I saw, I met a, an ABDL friend of ours, um, Pop Queer, or Queer Pop. Uh-huh. Um, gave him a hug. He was perusing. He was looking for things to buy. I was looking for other I was like, it'd be really cool if I saw somebody just walking around with like a, a tank top and a diaper. But unfortunately, <laughs> I did not. I did see a few pups Aww. and there were some furries out. Man, they must, uh, God, I, I got to give them credit because it had to be ridiculously hot, hot in that suit. Yeah. They were mm-hmm. out there mm-hmm. representing. Oh, yeah, they were yeah. out there representing. So I hear that. But no, that's just, good. yeah, but it was cool. Mm hmm. Yeah. So you're out in Tel Aviv tonight? I'm in Tel Aviv at the moment. So I'm staying in Badiam. I live in Badiam. Mm-hmm. But um, who the hell knows what's going to happen? I'm so disillusioned already. Not because of any reason that anybody would predict it, but because, like, I think the magic was lost within the, a day or two because, you know, I have. Um, our mutual friend mm-hmm. that I've been spending all this time with and I adore him. He's basically like a quasi boyfriend already. <laughs> Even though it's only been like three days, but like, um, it's very Ethan to do something like that. And, uh-huh. uh, and Israelis, whatever. I don't, I don't take care more about the other. <laughs> These things don't have the same meaning to Israelis. As they do to what do like, you, what, what do you mean by like, what do you mean by meanings? Um, what it like, means to be in a dad yeah, boy just, like, relationship. You, no matter what I say, he's mm-hmm. like, well, time will tell, you know, or like, we'll see, you know, it's not like, oh my God, you said the words that you're not supposed to say uh-huh. within the first five dates or whatever. <laughs> um, it's like, it's not, it's not like that. So, um, anyway, he's just like, okay, well, let's see how things go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's, there's that. Um, but, you know, I'm very, very fond of our mutual friends. But, get, um, yeah. But, uh, he's very negative. Like, honestly, uh, the thing is, I don't is know. He gonna listen, is he going to listen to this? <laughs> Do you need to watch what you're going to say? Oh, he know he knows he knows. Okay. I mean, I didn't say his name. <laughs> he knows. If he listens to it, he, he's like well aware that this is the case, and I tell okay. him it all the time, and okay. I make fun of him for it too. Okay, just I mean, I'm just, I'm just like, trying to, trying to look out for you, Ethan. That's all. Listen, I know I appreciate it, but honestly, it's not even the thing because Americans have problems with being negative. No one mm-hmm. else in the world is it an issue if someone is cynical and bitter and hostile and like all these things. Mm-hmm. It's not like he's not hostile. That's a bad word. Okay. But he's just very, very like jaded sure. and constantly throwing this around. Like I've been disenchanted by the whole Israel thing because everything that comes out of his mouth is I hate this country. God, this country sucks. It mm. sucks because of this reason, and because of this reason, and because of this reason, and uh, mm. da, 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 da. so I came here with like all these like dreamy. Yeah, ideas you're about like, what you're making, like yeah, you're like Aliyah. I'm here uh, in the uh, home. Oh, I never yeah. wanted. I, I didn't want to make Aliyah. I was okay. not sure I would do that, but okay. you know, I, I I didn't actually make Aliyah. I'm okay. probably not going to because gotcha. I'm not going to stay three years. I don't okay. want to stay three years. Uh, but if you, but even if I do, uh huh. But you, you have well, you have a passport. In some sense, I have right? a passport. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So I don't need. I'm getting. 
health insurance set up. So okay, it's, gotcha. Okay. It's not, I don't need anything else. Fair enough. Um, I mean, they give you like $3,000 for your tenure of three years. They make it yes. seem like it's a lot of money by it's giving not. it to you in six months. It's not. They give it to you over six months, <laughs> six months, and then three thousand dollars over three years for your three-year commitment to being in Israel. And I'm like, that's such bullshit. Yeah. I mean, uh, and is that like, check? Is that uh, dollars or shekels? Three thousand U.S. dollars. It's like okay. nineteen thousand shekels. Gotcha. And then it's like twenty thousand ish. So that's what is that? Twenty thousand divided by five is four. So it's like four thousand dollars over six months and then that's great for six months but then you have to stay there for three years and that's like well that's not part of the plan so yeah makes sense uh, yeah exactly okay, i don't know what enough. the fuck's gonna happen anymore gotcha. who knows but you're I just, just uh, for now yeah for now you're you're living that as right i'm in tel aviv yes and i love fun. it i do mm-hmm. love it yeah. i just i'm just like the bubble has burst mm-hmm. in terms of like my perception of things so now i focus on all the shit parts of it <laughs> <laughs> It's just how uh, it goes. I guess. So anyway. Okay. Um, but what, what did you want to talk about tonight? That's your job, mister. Oh, <laughs> shit. Well, I did have two things I wanted to talk about, but I didn't plan them. I didn't okay. actually, like, I would have come up with questions. Mm-hmm. I, I can't. Hold on. Okay. What is your favorite part about being a caregiver in the ABDL community? My favorite part is when, and this takes some time, um, but just you find a boy and he likes you and you like him and you're getting in the groove of you being a dad and he being the son and you begin to trust each other. Like you're changing his diaper and he's calling you dad and you're helping him move or transition easily if he wants to regress to regress and then you just just see the the smile and just the energy of just they they know that you acknowledge them and that you see them and you can just see it in the way they act and you can see it in the way they look at you and the way they talk to you and the way they smile that's my favorite part um, when you get mm. to that point where you have a real bond with your baby. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's my favorite part, I would say. What about you? My favorite part about being a caregiver in the ABDL community is um, like the surprise that I feel when I learn something new mm-hmm. that is part of the ABDL experience or when like i'm in a scene and something happens something emerges that is so novel that i've not seen before that is like wow this is really powerful Mm -hmm. (laughs) like like this recently um when i was in florida i met a guy who was not apdl but he was so moved by my profile on recon and mm-hmm. he was like oh i gotta try this i gotta mm-hmm. do this i've wanted to try this but now i have a reason to do it he was like 22 mm-hmm. something like that and um or 20 i don't remember mm-hmm. but um I was like, he lived like down the block so i was like okay what the fuck, why not um and uh he was so interested i wasn't attracted to him at all mm-hmm. and i i wasn't like there was no chemistry initially I don't think for either of us, but um, because he wasn't coming into it as a DPL. But um, I think it was so powerful once we got into it because I told him the rules, which is the pass fire goes in your mouth and you don't get to say anything but three words. And he really, and, and like I, I gave him the explanation of limited consent in that you know you tell me what you wouldn't have me do and then everything else is on the table mm-hmm. and you're going to let me steer the ship. Otherwise, you're going to let me be a daddy and whatever. Uh-huh. So, so what, emer- what emerged, which was so fucking surprising, was like he started at some point. There was this point at which we 
We're staring into each other's eyes. And I was doing this thing that I knew from attachment theory, which is like, you should not stare into someone's eyes. If they turn away, you don't like turn your head and try and get into their eyes again. Mm -hmm. You know, like if they turn away, it's like, that's what they need to do. They need some space. If they're a baby and they're being a baby and that's what a, a healthy attachment bonding process is when you're a parent child interaction in attachment theory, it's like you give each other the space you need to be who you are, or like you give the baby the space they need to be who they are. They could have some autonomy, mm -hmm. and um, so that's what I was doing when when he turned away. I, I was like looking into his eyes and only looking into his eyes when he would look at me, and when he'd look away, I'd be like, I'd look away, and I'd give him some a break, or like when I needed a break, I took a break. And but I wanted it to be as meaningful and realistic as it would be for like an actual infant. Mm. Um, so I was I was trying to follow that pattern as much as I could, and it was so effective. After a while, he started to put his hands in my mouth and mm. like touch my beard and play with my beard and mush my face around like a baby would. Yeah, and I was like, oh my god. I never would have even told someone to do that. You know, that yeah. was just like magic. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. Like spontaneous, creative, mm -hmm. just organic, playful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Magic that just happens when you're doing ABDL stuff. And he started putting his hands in my mouth and like my eyes. And then he got even deeper. He started just smelling my breath. Hmm. He was like, I just want to smell your breath. He didn't say it because he couldn't speak, but like, I would breathe out. I was so close to his face. He, when I breathed out, he was like, I could just hear him smell and like inhale as much as he could when I would breathe out. Cause he just wanted to, he was so intimate with me at that moment and he just wanted to be as close to me as possible. And he didn't have a way of expressing it. So I think it was expressed through, I'm just going to smell your breath. Mm -hmm. That's how sensual it was. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's... So I, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. It was powerful. It was powerful. Yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah, I think I I I like that you brought that up. Um, just because I I very much try to advocate like for the boys that I um, will baby is that I try not to give them too much instruction, and I try mm -hmm. to let them because I think like, that's just truer to who they are so whatever comes mm -hmm. out yeah. is will be more genuine and it'll it will just the interaction we have i think will be quite remarkable and quite strong like you were talking about like you didn't yeah. tell him to do any of these things um, no it, it was just came. i never even imagined that someone would mm -hmm. and that's what is so i think awesome about because i think i don't know it's just there's such a depth and there's so many ways that people can interact in ABDL. Mm -hmm. And so I think we both acknowledge that. And that's part of the reason why I try not to get in the way because I try not to give people too much instruction because like, I don't want them, I don't want to have like a pure genuine expression of this moment to be, mm -hmm. um, to be lost. If I, explicitly tell them to do something well i give them rules like like uh you can't say anything but three words and you mm -hmm. have to wear the pacifier in your mouth and you have mm -hmm. to wear the diapers and you have mm -hmm. to use the diapers and blah 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 mm -hmm. but other than that yeah it's like I, I try not to give too much instruction myself i, I try and be like whatever happens is a game you know mm -hmm. like and i just talk i just talk to them the whole mm -hmm. time like as if they're a baby and i talk them through it mm -hmm. like and I say it's perfectly natural that you you want to smell my breath. I mean, you want to be close to me, and I just affirm it, and it goes deeper mm -hmm. as they are affirmed in their behavior. Yeah, definitely makes sense. So, what's the second question? We got to keep, keep it. We got to keep it moving. We're we'll running out of time. Keep it moving. Okay. So, so I like what we talked about, but I just we gotta we gotta pivot. How do you approach setting boundaries and rules with your little? Ooh. So well, we guess, already answered that. 
Well, we can, I can talk about how I got to where I am now. People may not yeah. know that, but so, well, I talked about a little bit in the previous, but just being a people pleaser, being mm-hmm. a, um, trying to make everyone comfortable and happy and not necessarily being in tune with your own needs, the boundary work is not great. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I had a, I, I'm well, still friends with him. Um, I won't say his name, but, um, we had met, he actually wanted me to be his dad mm-hmm. and I was cool with that. Um, he was more on the DL side. Like it was more of a humiliation, sexual thing with him, mm-hmm. less so with me, but I was just. Um, I just, I wanted to daddy someone, but maybe he wasn't my ideal. And that's, that would have been a boundary right there is that I need to be like fully invested in someone if I'm going to be, yeah. if I'm going to be his daddy. But again, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm trying to be of service. I'm trying to please. So overlook that. Oh, it ended up be, it was not a disaster, but it was just like deeply disappointing <laughs> for the mm-hmm. both of mm-hmm. us just because um, I didn't, I wasn't real clear about um, my own needs and what worked for me and what didn't work for, for me as well. And he was so new to this that he didn't really have a sense of where his limits were and so we were all we were both just like meandering through this <laughs> mm-hmm. and it was we could both sense that it was uncomfortable and it wasn't fun and yeah it wasn't fun um and i would say we're still friends he's probably one of my best friends but um mm-hmm. i didn't really get good good I didn't really get great with boundaries until fairly recently. Like, um, I was in several codependent relationships. Um, I would ignore my own needs. I would be insulted. I would be dismissed. I would be cheated on and all these things. Um, Yeah. I was all these things. I just kind of, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I just kind of allowed to happen without any, Without me really saying, you know what? No, this is not okay. I'm not going yeah. to do this. But wow. you know, this is, but you know, just growing up in where, just in my environment where I was growing up, it's just, I was always, I was never worried about um, how I was feeling and what I needed to do um, to keep myself safe. So I had no boundary work leading up to well not no boundary work but it was very weak and flimsy boundaries so i didn't really get good with boundaries until i started seeing my therapist and just began to advocate for myself and make clear that what i want so that i would say recently it's taken some time and it's still uncomfortable i think boundary work is I want to say inherently like it's, uh, it's always, cause I never want to disappoint people. I still, I'm still leading with that, but um, I've learned to push through that uncomfortable feeling of establishing boundaries mm-hmm. um, with little. So I'm very clear now about, well, go ahead. I was just saying, I hope you don't set arbitrary and capricious <laughs> boundaries with me. Because sometimes it feels like you just don't call me back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, because it's after 9 p.m. or something. Yeah, because I'm going to bed. <laughs> uh, arbitrary and capricious. I, I, I personally don't believe in boundaries. I mm-hmm. think they're stupid. Okay. Uh, I think, I mean, everybody has boundaries. It's like there's no way to exist without boundaries it's like yeah. it's they happen naturally mm-hmm. but um i i don't believe in like focusing on them and making them a big deal or whatever it's just there are rules with littles that's mm-hmm. a whole different thing though 
right. the boundaries that we have like between two adults. Mm-hmm. Uh, rules, yeah, you fuck up a rule, you either get a punishment or you you get like some kind of uh, lecture, mm-hmm. like why the rule is important. But um, the rule is a little different than the boundary because it's very explicit and it's very um, pointed to being a kid and being in little space. Uh, I wouldn't call it a boundary. So I guess what's the, difference between, what's the difference between a boundary and a rule for you? I guess is the question. A rule I, I, I is very explicit. I The only time I would set a boundary personally in like a relate interpersonal relationship is like, I mean, the only time I have is like, you know, you really can't do this. Don't ever, you know, I'm setting, I don't call it a boundary. Like, mm-hmm. I'm setting a boundary. Here's a boundary. I just say, like, do not ever, if you want to be in this relationship mm-hmm. with me, do not ever lie. You value, there are certain times in life where lying is okay. Mm-hmm. It is not okay in the context of this relationship. Never, ever, 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 ever lie. You must always be as honest as you humanly can be. Mm-hmm. Omission is a different thing, but don't even. You should avoid that too. Like, really, honesty is the bedrock of of our and foundation of our relationship. If I sense that you're lying, I'm gonna be really fucking angry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no like consequences per se. Like, a rule would be like, you do this, you get a consequence, and here's what it is. But a boundary, not so much. I'm just trying to understand. I don't know. I don't, I'm, just just, under- I'm not the expert on boundaries. I'm just trying to understand. That's all. <laughs> I, I don't know shit about boundaries. I'm not going to okay. pretend. Because to me, boundaries. I mean, I'm not going to discount what you're saying. Like, if it's, it's, if it's clearly different for you, then I'll respect that. But the way you were describing, like, the lying and how it's just uh, uh just Well, a lying huge, in of just itself. A huge... Let me just interrupt you and say here, mm-hmm. lying in of itself is kind of something like, Setting up a boundary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boundaries are maintained by withholding information. So I'm saying I don't want any boundaries, basically. How is... In saying, don't ever lie to me. Don't be honest with me. How is... I mean, just don't be dishonest with me. How is boundaries withholding information? Um, my understanding of how people maintain boundaries in mm-hmm. adult relationships is they sometimes withhold information they shape, they shift like the, the se- think of it like this. Mm-hmm. If you're really uncomfortable with being ABDL, mm-hmm. you don't tell everybody that you are ABDL. You don't tell everybody, oh, I was hooking up with this guy and he was in diapers all day while I was having him over and he peed in his pants and I cleaned it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's withholding information. Specifically, and you don't do it consciously. You don't mm-hmm. say, I need to maintain this boundary where I'm protecting myself mm-hmm. because I'm, I, I need to withhold this information to, to do that. You just do it because it's natural. That's what I mean. Everybody has boundaries. Even if you say you don't have boundaries like me, mm-hmm. there are certain things that you protect because you're protecting yourself. Mm-hmm. And that is literally what a boundary is. You, something that is not even conscious most of the time, mm-hmm. but you're protecting yourself. And you do it by withholding information, lying, uh, manipulating certain ideas, or selling it a certain angle. We all do that. That's mm-hmm. like healthy. Okay. I'm just saying, I want to believe that I don't have any. Okay. <laughs> and I want to knock them all down as much as possible. And uh, that's how I operate. That's my MO. So okay. I'm not a good person to talk about boundaries with because I don't really know what they are above and beyond subconscious part. Okay. When people talk about having deliberate boundaries because the self-help gurus tell them have boundaries, I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, I, I think it's fair. And I, I, I completely understand when you're talking about like, I think you use a good example when you were talking about like sharing abdl and then mm. it's not a it's not you're not i agree you're not saying out loud okay i'm gonna set a boundary to not tell people 
about this part of myself. It just happens. You may have. You may have. You may but, have. But it also could swing the other way where you don't say that out loud. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or you don't want to talk about certain aspects of your financial life. Mm -hmm. And so you just avoid mentioning them. That's mm -hmm. a boundary, but you don't explicitly say that to yourself half the time. Mm -hmm. that you don't want to talk about these things. It's just embedded in who you are. Mm -hmm. I agree. I yourself. think, and I agree, but I think, um, like if a boundary is crossed or it's in the process yeah, of, that's of when cross. you know. Right. And then that's when I think you can, I mean, you can just ignore it or shut down or do a, a myriad of things, but you can also just be yeah. like, that's not, this is not something I'm okay with. Um, okay. It's interesting. I never really thought about it like that, but I think you're right. I mean, I'm only looking at it from one angle. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I just hate talking about boundaries. Like, this person has no boundaries. I'm like, yeah, girl, I have no boundaries. <laughs> I, or at least I try not to. Because I think in a relationship, for I mean, in an intimate relationship, I always strive to be as intimate as possible with people until they prove to me that there's a reason I should not be. Mm -hmm. That's how I operate. But in my in, most intimate relationships, I'm like, you, you can't be dishonest at all. In mm -hmm. fact, there's everything you should, there's nothing that you should be able to, you should feel that you have to hide from me. Mm -hmm. That's what real intimacy is. Like true, 100%, I love you, you love me, mm -hmm. intimacy. Right. So, anyway. And why would you want a boundary there? Like, don't hit me is a good boundary. Don't ever hit me or hurt me physically. Mm -hmm. That is a boundary I'm setting because I will leave you and we can't continue our relationship if you do that. Or mm -hmm. don't talk about my mother negatively because that is unacceptable. You know, those are boundaries. But, like, do you think about that in advance? It's like, I don't know. It, it, it's not planning. It's not planned, usually. It's, like, just, I don't know. Okay. I don't like talking about it, boundaries. <laughs> I hate boundaries. <laughs> okay. You can leave it at that. Okay, one, um, more, one more question, and then we can wrap up. Okay, one more question. Sorry, I went off the fucking. No, no, no. I think it's there. I, I, because I, I mean, I feel like that's something. I wouldn't say it's it's more. It's more of an issue, or maybe it is. I don't know, but. Um, boundaries or the topic of boundaries, I think, is important to. I would say quite a few ABDL. So I just wanted to dive a little deeper into what yeah. all that meant. So that's all. Yeah. I mean, I do not, I'm sure I contradicted myself a hundred times in that, that spiel, but whatever. I don't, I don't give a shit. That's how I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. So what is your favorite little space activity to do with a little? I'm going to be vulnerable for a minute. Mm -hmm. It's okay. So I would say, but I don't know if that's necessarily an activity. Like I think, I think we're both on the same page with how baby talk can be a good trigger to get yeah. into a little space, but I don't know if you necessarily categorize that as an activity. Um, yeah, that's an activity. I guess. Uh, okay, like, like we, I, I guess where where I'm struggling with that is that I don't know. I feel like it's more. I guess for an activity, it's it's more like a physical thing that you're doing. Like let's uh, let's draw. Like you get out some crayons and let's like let's draw something or let's. Yeah. Um, Put it's an action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same thing. It's an action. It's, a, it's an action. It's a behavior. Mm -hmm. Same thing. It's okay. a verb. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll, I'll backtrack. But yeah, baby talk. Um, and it took me a while to even get to that. Just, I think it takes a lot. I, I, I admire you because you you're able to do it 
<laughs> pretty easily. You did so well. Though, I did, I but you. I but that was I had to step into some like the unknown a little bit with that because oh, I've never really. Yeah. I mean, I've done it through. There's only a handful of guys that I've actually done it to, and I haven't done it enough mm-hmm. to really gauge whether or not it's effective. So I had no real. Oh, really? I had no real understanding because most guys, um, most guys, it's just at least the guys that I've interacted with, it's just easier and more feasible for them to just talk to me as they would normally talk. Um, oh, no. Yeah. That's unacceptable. Right. So, <laughs> right. So, but what I'm trying to say is that I've never, I like to do it. I just do, wasn't entirely sure whether or not who I was with found it useful or they, or, yeah, they, were, yeah. or they were leaning into it. But just with, um, but also it just speaks to, you know, you just need to, it's okay, you know. Not only with, is it okay, it's well, important. Just, yeah, just to, well, what I'm trying to say is, it's okay. Like it's just, I just needed to be with somebody who was more responsive to it, and we were just both on the same page about it. I was more aligning with people, and it's okay because I had a good time. It's just, yeah, it would have. I think it would have been more um, meaningful for me if that person did mm-hmm. respond to baby talk because I, I like it. I think it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. I mean, the only reason I know how to do it so well is because I was baby talked my whole life by my mother, hmm. even into adulthood, still to this day. But also, in addition, my um, my with my ex husband, we still sometimes talk and baby talk to each other. It's like incessant, and uh, but it's so that is such an expression of affection for someone. Hmm. Yeah, I don't did know. You, did your, I don't know how to do it. Your ex husband was that just pretty easy to get into that rhythm did it take some time i don't know it happened so quickly that mm-hmm. we started doing it it was like we started by doing like we'd make jokes about songs and like talk about stupid shit in the context of songs like i'd say be careful his bow tie is really a candy <laughs> <laughs> we make up words for songs and like Singing it to each other, and it was then it led to baby talk, and uh-huh. it was just nonsense. I see. But, um, my favorite activity everybody knows is um, bouncing a baby dude on my knee in his diapers, mm-hmm. preferably used. Um, why you and used? uh, what's the <laughs> what's, what's the what's like the right. What's the make or break <laughs> with it being used? What's the make or break? I mean, preferably used. I mean, I think it's nice if they can feel their own stuff on them because then they feel like, oh my God, I'm a baby. Gotcha. And uh, I'm being bounced on my daddy's knee and he's reading me a story. I've seen a lot. I think, I, that's, I think I think you, you're onto something with that because I see so much art. Um, like ABDL art of like people having like a used diaper or full diaper and they want to be bounced on like their knee. It's like, it's very much a thing. Yeah. yeah. And it's not sexual. It's like, a, Oh my God, I feel like such a fucking baby. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, yeah, it's a good reminder. Cause you know, your daddy's squishing all of the, and your daddy loves you anyway. Yeah, he's squishing. The message. Yeah, he's squishing all that. He's reminding, reminding that, reminding you that you are a baby. But you know, he still and has. He still he loves has, you anyway. He still has love for you anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, there it is. The sound of the buzzer. That's all, folks. Uh, yeah. That's all, folks. <laughs> there we go. Signing off. Okay. I'm Daddy Ethan, Doctor Ethan Hanovitz. I'm Daddy Fields here. And this is another episode of Daddy Dialogues. Daddy Dialogues. Take care. And now it's over. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.